Ay, la Ay, la creta, ay, la creta. Good afternoon, guys. Welcome to Life of Palos. Happy to have you here. We've got a great episode in store for you today with some very interesting thought pieces and sort of conversations that are worth having for all of you watching right now. And I want to make sure I mentioned yesterday's episode if you guys watched it. Uh, obviously, you heard that we were having some rough things happen in our family. Well, we got some relatively encouraging news in that department. I just want to thank you guys for all the thoughts and prayers. It means the world to myself and the rest of my family. So thank you guys so very much. That being said, guys, in an effort to get back to normalcy on the channel, I would implore you to subscribe if you've been a long time lurker but have never tapped the subscribe button we'd love to have you as a permanent member of the channel and it helps me know if we're doing the right sort of job here that gets people to to come over and stay and we're so incredibly close to 200,000 subs guys I know that if we push a little bit over the next couple days we can reach that goal and it's just a monstrous goal that we've had for a long long time all right guys enough of that let's get into our first story of the day which actually concerns Shmi and uh, sort of getting caught up in a very weird conversation that I wanted to bring to you guys to discuss so to make a long story short, uh, obviously uh, Shmi and a number of other automotive YouTube creators uh, have been dealing with how to how to create content during this pandemic and sort of how to work through some of the rules and regulations that different countries, cities, and states have put forth to regulate how people move around. Now, this is not a new issue whatsoever, guys. We've seen tons of different YouTubers talk about these sort of individual impacts and how it's affecting them. People living in California, people in Pennsylvania, people across the Atlantic, everyone is dealing with these sort of regulations in a very, very different way. And I guess with more people stuck in quarantine or stuck at home and not being able to leave the house, uh, I guess more trolls come out of the woodwork and sort of uh, make issues and troubles for some of our favorite YouTubers, like today's subject, Shmi. A couple days ago, Shmi put up a great picture on Instagram that showed that, well, his sort of blue crew of cars, uh, the Senna, the GT8, and the SLS, fresh with the brand new paint. And lo and behold, someone decided to attack Shmi for how he picked up the SLS. Simply starting the negative conversation with Shmi by saying, collected whilst in lockdown. Now, normally, Normally, Shmi does not respond to any sort of uh, negative comment bait out on Instagram or on YouTube. And generally, I, I've never seen Shmi do this before, but obviously we've seen him talk in videos about how people don't look at disclaimers, uh, don't look at how things are done, and don't look at the actual rules and regulations that sort of, uh, that he has to adhere to per living over there. So he decided to respond directly to this person that sort of accused him of, of doing this while in lockdown and saying the UK doesn't have a lockdown is incorrectly reported by the mainstream media. We have social distancing guidelines that are very clearly explained on the government website and there is no way I'm going to breach them. Now I'm not exaggerating when I said that the comment section basically turned into a war zone between Shmi and this other fellow uh, going back and forth with probably way too many exchanges uh, to give time to someone like this. It's just looking to make trouble. At the end of it, Shmi literally was like, you know, I shouldn't waste time replying, but if you go to the coronavirus page on gov.uk and read points four to six, it's very, very clearly explained. It absolutely blows my mind that someone would go after Shmi in this way without actually knowing the rules and regulations that would apply to the rest of London, and that Shmi was nice enough to actually point out the actual points within the guidelines for this particular fellow or chap to take a look at. Now, when it comes to the whole social distancing and sort of how we should, as a car community, react to that, I think it wildly varies based on where you live. So I'm not going to come down hard on anyone in that particular way, but if you're going to go after somebody, at least have the, the correct knowledge if you're going to try to slam them for something you think that they're doing illegally or wrong, which this particular fellow did not have whatsoever. And of all the people to go after, I think Shmi is one of the most careful automotive YouTubers in how he sort of does his videos, uh, making sure to do everything under sort of the letter of the law, and has been very, very careful on how he presents his material to the rest of his fan base during this crazy global pandemic. All in all, guys, if you don't have the proper information to work with, it's probably not the best idea to go after someone who actually does. All right, guys, next up is a story I never thought I'd be doing, but I wanted to bring it to your attention because it feels like sort of a capsule stone on something that we started eight months ago, if you can believe that. Yes, it was just that long ago that we covered the crazy Monterey Car Week stuff between a number of different automotive YouTubers, Daily Driven Exotics, Edmund Mondi, Houston Crost, a number of people were sort of wrapped up in this and a lot of other people were present at these particular events. Now, the crazy thing is during that period of time, we tried our best to sort of display all the information to you guys in a very unbiased way and just sort of covering exactly what was happening uh, and sort of how it related to the car world. We had some of the bigger automotive YouTube channels 
channels that have done prior things together and were sort of going at it at the time. Now that sort of fizzled out over a number of months after, but really didn't see too much stuff with that after the original events happened and we basically stopped covering it all together. So imagine my surprise when all of a sudden out of nowhere, I'm getting tagged and messages sent to me about a comment that Edmund made on Alex Choi's Instagram post. Now the post that Alex Choi made had nothing to do with any of that stuff. It was basically just him and his Lamborghini from sort of a POV view, uh, showing the anti-lag system. A lot, a lot of fun stuff there from Alex Choi. Uh, but a couple of different automotive YouTubers, Damon Fryer and Eben Monty, uh, individually commented on this particular post and a number of people decided to ask them some questions, which to my surprise, he responded to. So Edmund's original comment was something very uh, sort of congratulatory and happy toward Alex Choi's uh, thing, sort of saying how awesome it was. And then someone was like, hey, you know, hey, Edmund, you know, it's nice that you and Choi are not beefing with another person asking if they were all good now. And this is so surprising to me, guys. Evan Mondi jumps on and was like, you know, hey, you know, we've never had an issue. Choi and I have always been good. And this is the kind of the crazy part here. Uh, I don't have an issue with Damon either. It's 2020. There's no time for drama or beef. I accept and acknowledge my fault in everything that happened. With over 150 people liking that particular statement, about 50 of them that sent it to me directly afterward. Now, there are tons of supportive comments of that statement afterward. Uh, it's only a shame that more people didn't get a chance to see it because it was on Alex Choi's page and not Edmonds directly. So here's my take, guys, uh, my little opinion here. So generally, I'm of the opinion that time heals all wounds. Now, some wounds can be a lot deeper than others. And if you guys followed the original events eight months ago, you'll know that some of this stuff got pretty crazy without rehashing any of those events. And just because one particular side apologized uh, for their actions during that period of time, that uh, doesn't mean that all of a sudden everything is going to be all hunky dory and people are going to be doing collabs again and people are going to forget that things ever happened. But I do think that there's some merit in mentioning when sort of one side comes to the table at least a little bit and acknowledges fault or sort of wrongdoing and wants to move forward. I think that can be a generally good sign and something that I wanted to make sure you guys knew had occurred. So my question for you guys is in a perfect world, would you like to see collaborations between Daily Driven Exotics, Edmund Mondi and Houston Crows and the rest of the Royalty Exotics crew if that ever happened to occur? I think that generally there's been a lot of drama in the automotive community and so seeing things like this makes me happy even if it doesn't mean we're going to have any sort of you know final resolution between parties involved let me know your thoughts and comments in the comment section below i'd love to get your take of what you thought of the statement and sort of how you'd like everyone to proceed going forward and if you'd like to see eventual collabs moving on guys street speed 717 next on the list uh, with a monster purchase a 2014 dodge viper srt if i remember correctly uh, what a six spec by the way i've always been a fan of the viper it was a sad thing to see it sort of leave production lines and have uh, sort of the end of an era with that particular car. But loving the fact that Street Speed 717 got this monster V10 to add to the channel. I'm super excited to see what he's going to be doing with it. A monster congratulations for adding a big old V10 to your growing Street Speed 717 fleet. Make sure to go check it out. Wish him a congratulations and subscribe to his channel if you haven't already. Well over a million subscribers now and absolutely killing it with daily content. Now we talked about some of the crazier things happening in the Shmi world as of late, but I do want to mention one thing. He's got a great video on sort of doing window shopping in London, looking at super and hyper cars and sort of telling Shmi's stories as he goes about. A great video and something positive I wanted to make sure I talked to you about in this particular video after all the crazy stuff. Next up guys, Summit Life, absolutely crushing it with material lately too, uh, with a really great video on their now completed wide body Porsche and all the fun things they've done to that with sort of driving it into a mall and doing sort of like a half donut too. So it's a really fun loving episode. Uh, Clayton and Faith doing a fantastic job on that channel. Make sure to go check it out guys. Let me know what you think of the new wide body Porsche that they have. All right, guys, next up, uh, a rather contentious video from Remove Before Race talking about the next version of the C63 from Mercedes. Uh, it's not going to be a V8, apparently. It's going to be a four-cylinder hybrid. Yeah, not the most exciting announcement ever, but Remove Before Race dives into that. So if you're a big Mercedes fan and you want to know what the heck is going on with their new C63 going from an eight to a four-cylinder, uh, feel free to go over there and comment because they've got all the info for you there. All right, guys, next up is Throttle House with a video that I think I made mentioned a couple days ago, but I want to make sure I get it back in front of you in case you've missed it. And it's hard to keep track of all the stories that we do. Throttle House did a video on the top seven cheapest supercars that you can buy. And I love this list for a lot of reasons. For starters, most people on the planet will never own a supercar. But I think that having goals is a great way to motivate ourselves to do incredible things, to make money, all that kind of jazz. And finding cheaper supercars is relatively attainable if we all work hard and smart enough. So while you might never own a $300,000 McLaren 720, you might be able to own a first or second generation Lamborghini Gallardo, which is much more attainable long term. Check it out, guys. Seen through glass next on the list, recapping his 5,000 
mile adventure uh, in Australia. What an interesting video from this. Uh, love the Scene Through Glass channel, one of the classiest automotive channels. I had the pleasure of him coming out, visiting us here in Colorado Springs, went up Pikes Peak with my McLaren and his Porsche. It was a great, great time. Make sure to go check out his latest video. It's a fantastic sort of recap of one of his most incredible adventures on Drive the World. And folks, that's all I've got for you today. I uh, thank you so much for sort of getting me through yesterday's funk. We're feeling much better today and trying to soldier on like we always do. Thank you guys for subscribing. If you did, getting us closer to 200,000 subs. What an incredible milestone and achievement. I'm just so pumped to be very, very close. So thank you guys so much for supporting everything we've been doing during this crazy pandemic. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't. And uh, that's all I got. We'll see you tomorrow and bye.